From the secret palaces of the Orient, from the modern masters of Hollywood, comes the most charismatic, most exciting, most reality-altering talk show in town. It's Marcus the Interviewer. Marcus the Interviewer. It's not just a talk show. It's psychological entrapment. They'll never see it coming, and they'll never know what hit them. One show, and the audience is yours forever. Join the masses and applaud, laugh, cheer, and yell his name. Marcus gets you in the mood. He brings out the person inside of you. He brings out your energy. He charms. He gestures. He enchants. He acts. He's a charisma. And around him, you feel like one too. Remember, if you don't use him, then someone else will. Act now while there's still time. Come in and tell your story. Come in and promote your brand. Come in and set the world on fire if that's what you desire. For Marcus is the guy who's got you covered. Legends are born, not made. Stars, celebrities, and legends are made here at Marcus the Interviewer. You come in a civilian and leave a superstar because that's just what Marcus does. Watch Marcus on weeknights with the hottest commodities and superstars in town, and join in on the fun after work. Sit back, relax, and let Marcus do his thing. Come be a guest on the hottest, most talked about, culture-driven show, Marcus the Interviewer, where stars are made and legends and icons are celebrated every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 p.m. Central Standard Time to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Allow your favorite brother and friend to take your brand to the masses. Marcus the Interviewer is ready to tell your story. Hey, how y'all doing? Listen, welcome to a brand new episode of Marcus the Interviewer Show. You already know what we do every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, period. Every Tuesday and Friday, we interview with legends and icons, and they celebrities in their own right. They're making life-changing moves in their communities. They're making major moves. They're doing dope things. They, they're incredible movers and shakers. So, you know, today I'm super excited, right, because we have an icon. We have like a real icon. We have like a Princess Diana. We have like, uh, you know, Rosa Parks. We have like, a, you know what I'm saying? Like Betty Smith. You know what I mean? We we have one of those. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, it's not every day you get like a celebrity on the Marcus the Interviewer show. And I don't know how y'all Friday was, but mine was the bomb. You know what I'm saying? Had a couple buffets, long 12-inch sub sandwich. I'm tiny. Stomach is on the roll, okay? Stomach, roll. You know what I'm saying? But you already know, people. I can't do nothing without my theme music. Hey, yo. What's up, baby? Yo, this is the one, bro. Oh, yeah? What's good? I am telling you, man, that, that cat, Marcus Boyd, yeah. you know, the interviewer. Yeah, I know that cat. This is the one, bro. Woo. Okay. Mr. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. You want the scoop, he gon' give it to you. No matter the conversation, he's already prepared to go and get into it with you. If you want somebody that's willing to listen with positive information for the vision, then all you gotta do is give him a call or catch him on his Instagram, that's all. And he gon' get with you like ASAP. They gon' tell you where to place that. And he gon' give you every single thing you need in order for him to, like, make that dream happen for you. You believe in it, do what you do. Competition is sick with the flu, so if I was you, I would just jump on the plane, because he's coming through. Yo, it's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Some people call him a kind of if you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer, the conversation king pennies the ruler. You'll never find an interviewer that's cooler than leave you feeling like he already knew ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Call him a kind of super. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Conversation King Finn is your ruling you. <laughs> Mr. Marcus Boy be bucking and bucking and bucking on him like a Bronco. Catch you with them conversation combos. He ain't with the he said and the she said. That ain't the way that it's done, yo. It's that real deal. Holy feel, it's so for real and you can feel that. He escaped from all of the imitators, so you know that he know where the real at. Like A1 on your plate, son, when it's all good, we don't knock that. But it's ball floss with his hot sauce, and he paid the cost, so we rock that. Get your now ladies and your lemon heads with your popcorn and your soda pop. Now go ahead and buckle up for the ride, because in a second, yo, the show yo, drop. Yo, it's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Some people call him a connoisseur. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. The conversation king pennies the ruler. You'll never find an interviewer that's cooler than leave you feeling like you already knew ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Call him a connoisseur. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. The conversation king pennies the ruler. You'll never find an interviewer that's cooler like, ay, 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 ay. 
Hey, 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 Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think I forget Sunday. Hey, listen. That music is needed, okay? It's needed like a sin in these Christ. It's needed. Like, you know, a fat guy, fat guy needs a buffet. That's needed. Thank you, the minister. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, people, I am super overly pumped and I am excited. I want you to look at these people in my eye. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to look at them because I am excited for the guests, the legendary, iconic guests that we have here on the show tonight. She stopped her busy schedule. I mean, she's so busy. Like, she's between states. I mean, she's so busy. Like, she be growing plants and, and stuff. Like, she's so busy. She still be writing books in between, like, all of that. Like, she's a community leader. She's a force to be reckoned with. She's an award-winning entrepreneur. She's a celebrity PR. She has a PR firm. Listen, people, when I talk about Manisha Holiday, publicist, crazy, you know what I'm saying? So, we about to bring the legend in. How you doing? Hey, Marcus. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I am so excited to be here with you. And I just, I have to say, your uh, intro had me going over here. I'm pumped. I'm ready for this interview with Marcus. Marcus, the interviewer. Let's do this. Let's, How you guys do? Let's go. <laughs> well, welcome to the Marcus, the interviewer family from your family. So um, we knew my family is new to you, even though the world is not. If the globally, internationally, everybody know who Manisha Holiday is. So, for my family, where did you come from? How did you grow up? How was the childhood? Wow. Wow, wow. So, um, I am from the city of Chicago, uh, Illinois State. Chattown is what, what they call it. Shy. And, um, the Shy. And, yeah, the Shy. <laughs> I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and I reside in Atlanta, Georgia now. Um, man, growing up, my life has always been blessed. So growing up, no matter um, good, bad, or ugly, always been blessed. My family's blessed. I'm blessed. So growing up in Chicago was definitely um, not, you know, it's good and bad experiences. However, I was a part of a blessed family. Um, so I had a great childhood. I did have um, so, some things countered, but I did not allow that to uh, take control over my life or my success or my purpose. And um, that's why I'm here today. Because. So you basically a- saying that <laughs> you're blessed when you come, you blessed when you go. Amen. You blessed. That's what I'm- I'm just blessed. Ask me how I'm doing today. I'm blessed. How you doing today? I am blessed. How are you? <laughs> Girl, you know, a little song, a little song. I'm there. Some, I'm in the area. You know, you know, he's been with me every day of my life. So uh, I got to give it to God, first and foremost, who is the head of my life. And Man. I could do nothing that I'm doing today without him. He's with me right now. Like, I don't leave home without him. You know, he's always on the passenger side. <laughs> God and the credit card. Listen, God and the credit card, okay? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what made you want to become an entrepreneur? And why did you pick Atlanta out of all states you could have picked? Okay, so um, growing up, I have always been a resource to my family. I have always uh, wanting wanted to know more. Um, even as a child, if it was something that I did not know, I've always researched to get the answer and never said that I don't know. And so just having that mindset as a child, um, it grew with me into my uh, younger, you know, my my young adult life into my adult life. Uh, it's It's where I come from, you know, so we strayed away sometimes from things that we learn early on, but you know, you always know what to go back to what's right. And so I just, I have it in me, you know, uh, being a resource and not waiting on others, uh, to tell me things. I put my foot out there since I was young, as I stated, and I learned and taught myself. 
the things that I didn't know. And so it just made me um, perfect at uh, strategically thinking for myself, uh, planning for myself and uh, in my own life. And so that's how I'm able to share that gift that God has blessed me with internally with others. And that's why I started so, my public firm. Because we about to go there. We about, to, we about okay. to go there. Why? How did you start the holiday firm? When did you start the holiday firm? I started the holiday firm in 2015. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia in 2000. About that. Oh, sorry about that. So I um started my company in 2015. However, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia in 2014 when I put my first daughter in college. And um, I knew as a single mom, I did not want to raise my son in the city of Chicago. At that time, he was eight years old. And so um, having a daughter that was entering college was my cue to say, um, okay, I've done my part as a mom to my first child, right? And I've sacrificed, you know, these 18 years um, being a single mom, um, having her at the age of 15, pregnant at 14. I sacrificed a lot to get to 2014, you know, to, you know, put her in college. And so a lot of things I didn't, ex I had to grow up and become a mom early on. So I didn't really have that fun, you know, college life myself until I was older because I had to take care of my daughter, you know, being a young mom. And it was my exit out. You know, I said, I'm putting my daughter in college. You know, my son, I'm a single mom. I don't want to raise him in this city. I want my children to get out and see that it's other, you know, cities and states things going on that you could have more, you could do more, you don't have to be confined to just, you know, where you was born and raised. And early on in my life, I traveled, uh, visiting my family south. Uh, I used to go to Jackson, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, through Georgia, uh, visiting family on summer breaks. You know how your parents be like, I'm sending you south for the summer. I was one of those children, me and my brothers that my brother, that um, we were sent south. When school was out, it was time to go visit the family south. And so that's how I migrated south because I loved to be in the south. I love the dirt roads. I love, um, I grew up, grandparents having uh, gardens in the backyard and growing our own uh, greens and uh, tomatoes, our own vegetables, you know, I, I, I had all that growing up. And so in the South, you know, that's where the agriculture is like booming. Right. <laughs> and so right. because that was, and I was so passionate about, and that I loved. And then that also was like a healing method for me, you know, working, always working, learning new things, uh, Atlanta, I was just like, I'm going, I'm moving to Atlanta, right? I put her in college. Me and my son got on a Greyhound bus. It was just a decision I made. You have to just make the decision, right? Some people, they live in fear and be like, no, I want to be around my family. I don't want to be alone. But I knew that God had more in me. You know, I had more in me in store. God in store more in me. And I knew that it did not end in the city of Chicago. I'm actually in Chicago right now, right? Working. And um, oh, okay. I knew that uh, it was more in me. You know, you know, when you are determined to uh, learn your identity, uh, learn truly who you are and your purpose, and you have a genuine heart, a server, and you believe in the most high that he can do any and all things above all that you can ask for. I walked with it, you know, my everyday life. So I knew that 
moving south was eventually the old, you know, the older I got, I was not going to be in Chicago. That Those decisions was already made before I even had children, right? But I just seen um, my way out in 2014. Mm. I knew um, after divorcing my husband, uh, 2013, that I just wanted a new life. Um, I wanted my children to have a better life. And I wanted to be the one to give them that as a mother. Um, I wanted them to see more than just Chicago. I wanted them to learn about, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, and some of the amazing things um, that have come and grew up out of Atlanta and people like Dr. Martin Luther King, right? Um, I, I have studied him. I think we all have, you know, early on in our life, we learned a lot about Dr. Martin Luther King um, in school, as a in elementary school, in your younger years, you learn about that in Black Black History Month. And so, you know, it was like really near and dear to my heart, like, wow, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. This is what I'm going with Martin Luther King, you know, walked and marched and like that stuff was inspiring for me. I, you know, this generation, they don't even really be like linked into that, but like that's everything I advocate for now to bring back traditional into our community so that our children, you know, can have some of these same experiences as well. And um, I just left. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I did not want. And I knew no matter what, whether it was somebody by my side or if I was married or if I was single, God was going to take care of me no matter what decision I made. And so I made that decision. And I, at that time, I was still in the medical field, working in the hospitals. And I moved here on the Greyhound bus, didn't even have a place to live in Atlanta. Me and my son, we went to a hotel until God said so. I had a good amount of money. I knew I could get a job because of my medical background. I had a job within seven days working for Tanner Health in Bremen, Illinois. 30 days later, I had a whole house I was renting, you know, got a car. Wow. And it was on and popping, you know, since that day, I still haven't turned back. I come back here for work or to visit my family, but I've never came back to live. You know, I built my life, um, just me and my children uh, moving to Atlanta. I built my life for where, I, where God seen my life for me at that time. And then when I moved to the city, I know how creative I am. Atlanta, Georgia taught me how to become an entrepreneur. Atlanta, Georgia taught me that I didn't have to work a nine to five every day. You know, I didn't have to go in the hospital working overnight away from my children, too tired to do homework because I'm working overnight. You know, it pulled out all of my gifts and talent. You know, Atlanta, Georgia and the wonderful people there because I've met so many wonderful people like you, Marcus, I met you like maybe two oh, years you after there, but you were just, you're an amazing man. You're an amazing person. Um, you have always been one of those individuals that have welcomed me to Atlanta, you know, with open arms and accept me exactly for who I am, you know, and not, you know, what others want me to be. And so I thank you for that, Marcus, because you've been 100. It's a lot of people that don't be 100, you know? And um, it's just the love is different. I saw that, you know, maybe like a year after uh, being in Atlanta. I'm like, man, this love is different. You you could say hello and person ain't, uh, what you looking at me for? You know, you know, you're like, God, I just said hello. You know, that's it. I never got that from anyone to this day in Atlanta. But in my own city, I can say hello and somebody try to jump on you for saying hello, right? So you don't even want to talk to you say hello. Like, because some people just, they just mad. They wake up mad. 
at the world. And um, I started the holiday firm because I wanted to be a resource for other individuals that did not know how to um, tap into their gifts. I had some growing to do myself. So before I started my business, I took myself through personal development. After I took myself through personal development, I became a certified personal development coach. I can't, you know, coach or inspire anyone if I haven't overcome those same things myself. So I was dedicated to healing myself, one, um, giving more to myself, meaning my education, continuing education classes. And I was I was a single mom. So I had to put my daughters in college. I went to college early on, but I had to stop because now my daughters was getting older. And now I got to pay for them to go to college. I can't pay for all three of us, right? So as a mom, I said, you know what? I'm going to get these girls through college and I'm going to go back when they out, right? And so even like now, um, that's exactly my daughter graduated. She she has a bachelor's in social services. Uh, she graduated in 2019. She has an amazing job. My 23-year-old daughter, she graduated, I believe, in 2019 from Paul Mitchell, Atlanta. She's a master cosmetologist. And my son, he just goes to homeschool. He's 16 years old. However, where they are in their life, it has opened up more room for me, mom, now, due to all of my sacrifices to make sure that I provided the best life, the best education for them that... I've even gone back to school. So I just So you telling me So you just completed something major in school and you telling me that you was a single mom of three kids, you put two of them through college, your son is in homeschool and now you in school, right? Yes. So my middle daughter, she went to Georgia Gwinnett College first before um she became a master cosmetologist. She decided, you know, the, the major, the four-year colleges wasn't for her. Um, she's very talented. She's always done hair, braided hair, played with baby dolls since she was like 10, 11 years old. And so, you know, she does my hair, my makeup. When you see the pictures and see me dressed up and at events, my daughter is the one that makes sure that her mom is up to part when she's out here representing herself in the world. And, um, it's just the sacrifices of a mother that you have to make some time for your children when um, a father is absent. Their dads wasn't absent from their lives. He was absent from the home. Now, their fathers are there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that. You know, I my children father are all great, amazing men. And, um, I wouldn't have them by anyone else but who their fathers are today. And so still having your father there, it's just the, the love of a mother. You know, I've always been, God bless me with these children. And no matter what, I got to take care of these children, right? By any means necessary. And so the kids is living their life out of college. I'm a grandmother now, as of March 10th of this year. Um, I was whoa, whoa. We dropping a bomb on that. Dropping a bomb on that. Yeah. I'm a grandmother. A lot of people say, girl, you look about 28 yourself. Well. You do. You do. I wish I feel that way, you know. But um, I am approaching 42 in October. I... Back to the education, um, Marcus, to answer your question about major accomplishments and going back to school. Just last week, I finished my leadership management um, certification at Troy University online. I also completed my uh, financial wellness for growing pace business world from Troy University last week. And just Congratulations. This week, 
Oh my God, this is big. And I have not shared this with anybody but my mother yesterday over breakfast. So what I'm about to share with you is the exclusive. Um, Cause I just haven't even realized like, how should I share this, right? But now God just told me that this is the perfect time and the place for me to share that I just got accepted to Harvard Business School online. Wow. For their strategy program and their Entrepreneur Essentials program. So I am now a Harvard student, business student. And wow. I take continuing education courses so that I can be the best publicist, the best business development coach, the best brand activator, the best trusted advisor, the best community leader, the best woman that I can be. And I just want to encourage any single mom today, no matter what your, your situation may look like, feel like, you can be all that you want to be. You just have to put your mind to it and you just have to um, learn how to encourage yourself. Don't wait for others to tell you what you can do. You believe in yourself. You believe with the, all your heart. And as God said, you don't lean into your own understanding because he is there and he will direct your path straight. And a lot of us moms, we, we tend to give up on ourselves because it's hard. And, and I understand how hard it is. You know, I've cried many nights. It's been days that I'm like, how am I going to feed my kids tomorrow? You know, I've been in all those situations where, where are we going to sleep at? We've been burnt out. Our house lost everything in 2015. I had nothing pregnant with my son and two girl, little girls, you know. And um, God has been my foundation, my source. He is my everything. Like, there's nothing more that I can say tonight outside of God did it. That's it. That's all. That's it. Well, well I, I kind of want to talk about your book. I wanted to talk about your book. You've been an author. I want to talk about the new business situation you in with the, uh, what is the H-E-P, H-E-M-P. So, um, or, yeah, I want to talk about that. Like, I know you, you said... You know, you was like, okay, you don't got nothing else to talk about. Like, hold oh, I don't want to talk about those things. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. So let's talk about your amazing book. I have read it cover to cover. It's amazing. Have you? I guess. So, <laughs> yeah, I have. I have other people help me read it. But it still was me reading it. <laughs> but like, I mean, I got the story. It's deep and it's concise. And it's informational. So, you know, what made you want to become a book author with all the other stuff you already doing? Oh, because God bought me from victim to victor. And when I say from victim to victor, I have grown up without my father. Um, I have been fatherless. I have been molested. Um at an early age with by someone my mother uh, trusted with her child. And I needed healing. And I didn't know how to heal. And so writing has been my healing method, along with, you know, counseling at my age, at the age of 38, just saying, you know what? I can't go any further with this on me. I got to do something. I got to get me some counseling to leave my past behind. And I just want to write, you know, and talk about it and just finally tell the world truly, you know, even my mom, my mom didn't even know until I wrote my book. You know, a lot of things in my book, my mother was surprised about because I always hold things in and deal with my own pain. You know, I don't want people to see me hurting. So I've always been the strong one. My mom have three children. Um, I'm the middle child and I've always been so strong. Like I don't want people to see me crying. Even if I'm sad, you're going to see me wake up with a smile, show up 
on Facebook or anywhere else, walking in work with a smile, no matter how I feel. And I had to learn that in my healing process, right? Coping skills, um, writing, help, help heal me. Telling my story mm. and not shame of my story. Like I was just so open now to say, you know, I grew up without my dad, but God said he will father the fatherless. I have been um, abused um, mentally and physically and emotionally, you know, early on in life and as an adult in abusive relationships, domestic violence. And so I was always strong and held on to who I knew I was in all those situations. I held on to the word of God. And if you read my book, um, you will read how God has walked with me every day of my life going through a lot of that term oil. It was just me and him. Like I said, I grew up um, early on going to church, uh, youth leader, singing youth choir, uh, serving my community. That's all I knew, right, as a child. And so the older I got and my life was in shambles, I had to stop and say, wait a minute. I had to go back to where it all began and what I knew what was right. And that was God. When my grandmother and my mother introduced me to God, you know, at an early age, like, I carried it. I ain't saying that I've been perfect and I haven't strayed away, but I came back home. And I'm I'm never leaving home again. My home is with God in the kingdom. And I am a kingdom servant. Hmm. So talk to my family about the new project with your business partners. I can't even pronounce the word, so forgive me. Um, okay. But I see that y'all are doing monumental and amazing things with that as well. So um, I talked about it in the last chapter of my book. Um, I became an investor. God had blessed me at the beginning of COVID with, uh, some extra income in my bank account. And I said, man, what am I going to do with this income, right? I didn't want to go buy Jordans and new car and jag it off. I'm older now, right? I have children. One day, I'm thinking then, one day I'm going to have grandchildren. And now I really actually have a granddaughter, right? Um, I said, I never invested in anything. And one of my friends had posted up a bag of leaf. I thought it was marijuana. And I'm like, what you posting this up on Facebook like this for? And he just shared with me about a local farm in Metro Georgia that had just opened, just got the first license to grow CBD hemp in the state of Georgia, which is the Green Toad Hemp Farm. And I asked him to tell me more. And as he began to tell me more, he also shared with me that, you know, they were looking for investors. And I said, wow, they're looking for investors. Well, how much is it to invest? And so me being who I am, I went and did my research to find out about this, this amazing plant, CBD hemp. What is CBD hemp, right? I know marijuana. That's where everybody pretty much, you know, parents, that reefer and stuff, words like that, <laughs> not CBD or hemp, right? Um, so I did my research to learn about what CBD was and hemp and the difference from marijuana. And I asked to be introduced to my partners. Um, at that time, it was Reginald Reese, the CEO, and Dwayne Hirsch was the COO. And I met with them and they shared with me their business model. And I just said, let's do this. And I invested five figures into the Green Toe Hemp Farm during COVID. And Hold on. During I didn't know. Time, time, flag on the plane. Time, 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 time. <laughs> Hold up. No, These are all going to make me faint. <laughs> These are all going to make me faint. You just said you invested five figures. 
Mm -hmm. God, Jesus Christ. Listen. She making boss moves. That's a boss move. Yep. COVID was here, and it's like, at that time, we couldn't even come outside. Like, you couldn't even go to a restaurant. You had just, you know, we was locked down. The world was locked down when I did that. And I ain't going to lie, that scared me. I'm like, man, look, I'm a publicist. I'm an entrepreneur now. I knew I could always go back to the health field because I keep my license current. However, I'm like, if we could shut the world down like this for this COVID-19 pandemic, imagine where we're going, right? I'm like, at this time, I barely even had, you know, I got this little blessing. I can't just jag this off right now. I need to figure out what to do with this money God blessed me with. You know, I got to make something out of this because I don't even know how we going to come out this pandemic. We hadn't even had an exit plan in place yet, right? So I'm like, right. this is this is the move right here, especially when I saw that CBD hemp was a $25 billion industry, right? And where it's going in the next five to eight years, I was like, oh, yeah, this ain't nobody but God. You know, if God, if you bless me with this money and this plant was created to take care of our bodies internally, I want to be a part of this. I want to tell my community about this plant. I want to take this plant, even though um, we cannot diagnose, medically diagnose, you know, uh, that this plant would cure anything. I have proven testimonies of how this plant has helped so many people around the world, right? And so I believe in this plant. You know, the more I research to educate myself on it, and was getting out there wanting to know more, I knew that this was the industry for me. And I knew that investing one day in my life had to happen because that's something that I never did before. I've done a lot of things. I've worked in, I mean, medical, retail, and I'm not talking about like the cashier. I'm talking about the merchandise at the department store. I'm talking about the team leader, you know, in the, the lab, in a hospital. I'm talking about, you know, youth leader in a church, taking care of children, uh, daycare, assistant day director of daycares, even to the point of opening up a daycare. I've done it all. You know, when you're a mom and your back is against the wall and you just want to make sure you stay ahead, to save you and your children and make sure y'all secure and good, you're going to do what you got to do. And what I did was always kept myself in school and learn more and more and more and more and more. Like I never, I never get tired of learning even today. That's why I'm back in school today. I don't get tired of learning. I want to learn something new every single day. That's going to better my life and that I could teach others how to better their life. So I am, so um, No, you go ahead. <laughs> so right now, um, I started um, as an investor at Green Toll Hemp Farm and became the publicist of the farm. Right now, today, I am the acting COO, Chief Operational Officer of the Green Toll Hemp Farm. And um, we are a farm fresh, Georgia certified farm, vertically integrated. We're locally grown. There's no middleman. We have over 100 products that we have um, released to our in our dispensaries, two dispensaries. We're working um, very diligently. In about 15 days, we'll be opening up another store, a little five points in Georgia. We have a full manuf uh, manufacturing facility where we are now serving white label clients and wholesale pricing where we uh, fill vape cart pens. We make edibles, plant-based, vegan edibles, and regular edibles. Um, what else we do there? We bottle lotions, tinctures, CBD oil. We have Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10 products. 
we educate our community. We are we have partners uh, at Georgia Southern University, uh, Georgia State University. Our our senators support us. Our city of Metter, Chamber of Commerce, and the city and the mayor, where we are. That's our home, Metter. Um, so we have the full support of our local leaders in Metter, Georgia. Uh, my partner, Reginald Reese, who is the CEO, is a part of Big X program, which uh, has been absolute, I'm sorry, has been absolutely amazing with supporting the Green Toe Hemp Farm. So we have a lot of uh, local political uh, support. Uh, we have support, of course, from our communities all over, not just in Georgia. Our products are sold everywhere online. And it's just been a joy to be a part of this industry because I have learned uh, just how this plant is literally like changing lives. And it's my goal to keep mm. educating the community on that, how this plant can help your life. Well, for my family, it's, let us know if you what new things you got coming up. You know, what is on what is next for Mandisha Holiday, the holiday firm, multiple hat wearing queen. What is next? I'm telling you, right. So what's next um is uh rebranding my company, the holiday firm. Uh we're a dynasty. Our goal is to create a dynasty right and so in order for me to create that dynasty that's why i have to keep on educating myself in building along with uh rebranding my company um i have added business development services because i know it's a lot of inspiring entrepreneurs out there that don't know how to start a business don't where to know where to go don't know who to trust we are a trusted source that you can trust with your business and your personal information. Uh, we, I've added brand activation because some people already have their business started and they just need a little branding, a little marketing. And then also the public relation part of it. We can't share your story in the public unless your foundation and your business is together, right? And so those three things um, are still at the top of my list to continue uh, building more uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, assisting them. And then also uh, my book. I'm adding another chapter to my book and I am redoing my book mm -hmm. cover. And I want to start a podcast and I want to continue to share my story during COVID, I released my book, right? And so I've never been on a book press tour. And so now I'm prepping for my book press tour around the world and, 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 and getting ready to just share this powerful story with many other single moms and women that um, is ready to heal, is ready to just say, hey, I'm all in you know, for myself and not for anybody else, right? I'm all in for myself. And so that's exactly um, what my book tour is going to help other the decisions of other women. They will make that decision if they're going to choose their self or are they going to choose others, right? Um, right. It's going to be amazing. The name of my uh, book tour and I'll share it here first. God did it. That's it. I can't say nothing else, right? I want the world to know that God did it. It's not me. It's God. Because a lot of people look at me and they see me online and they don't really know the struggle behind everything. You know, my day-to-day -day struggles still. I still have bad days and I got to show up. I still have days where I'm sad, you know, and I got to put a smile on my face. I still have those days, you know? And so at the end of those days, I am still a success story. I'm still changing lives. 
I'm still making things happen. I'm not allowing those things to take control over me. I have taken control over it. And so God mm. did it. And the world is going to know if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. And that's my so tour. How can God, he did it for me, he'll do it for you. So how can a how can a God, single mother or anybody get in touch with Manisha Holiday and the Holiday Firm? How can they reach out to you? How can they, you know, contact with you? Okay. So you can follow me um, on all social media platforms at The Holiday Firm. Uh, my Facebook is Queen M Holiday. Also, my website is www.theholidayfirm.com. And that's holiday with one L, like Christmas holiday, Thanksgiving holiday. Some people put two L's, but it's one L. If you just type in the holiday firm, where there's Google, wherever, Google me. Just put in the holiday firm and Manisha Holiday will come up. So do you have any words of advice to a young lady that may want to get into field, the field that you're in? They won't, may want to do the same things that you do. Do you have a, any words of, of encouragement that you can give them? Yes. Come and see me. Connect with me, whether if you're not in Atlanta, Georgia, virtually, you know, I do virtual um, meetups, consultations. Um, I am inspired myself by uh, women in general. And it is my goal to continue to inspire other women. So with that being said, I'm a servant before anything. So even if it's not business and you just need somebody to talk to, you're welcome to call me, right? For that inspiring mother that just don't know. Because I was once that mom where I ain't had nobody to talk to, right? That can share some things with me. You know, my mom then was there, but, you know, I had a working mother that had was also a single parent that had to work and provide for us, me and my brothers and sisters, so I would just say that um, keep your head up, keep loving yourself. Like Mary J. Blige say, get used to waking up in the morning and looking in the mirror and saying, good morning, gorgeous, right? When that song right. came out, every morning I wake up, I say, good morning, gorgeous, in the mirror, right? Because you got to love yourself first. And I spent a lot of time in my early 20s loving on others, like wanting to see others happy. But ladies, we got to get into loving ourselves more and loving ourselves first before we can love anybody, right? We got to tap into ourselves. So start inspiring yourself more. Start looking at yourself, right? And looking at the things that you love to do. Or the things you would like to do. Get a pen and paper. Write it down. Whether you have the finances or not. You still have to write down your plan. It's still something for you to look at. And say. And have hopes. And keep believing in your dreams. That this is my goal. Right? And I'm going to get there. Affirmations. Meditation. Whatever you got to do to make yourself happy. I just want you to do that, right? And I'm going to leave you with a secret. A lot of people, well, it's not a secret. It's just something that others tend to not think about. So for me, I love music. I love all genres of music, right? And so right. I love music, right? And so music make you dance. It make you happy. Yay, music, right? And so right. listen to Music, because music don't always keep you moving, going to keep you happy even when you sad. You cut that music on, you, hey, okay, get a little mama, all that, hey, right? And so right. that's what I, that's how I uplift myself, right? I know if I cut on some music, 
I'm about to get the move. And whether it's a slow jam, hey, you know, or whether it's pop, lock it, drop it, pop, lock it, drop it, you know, <laughs> it's like no matter what type of music it is, it's filling, right? It's filling. Right. And you're drill them going. And after a while, that smile is going to turn to, hey, yeah, right? And so just just start tuning in with yourself. Like, that, that's a tool that I use to tune in to myself. Like, when I'm free, my family, my friends know I'm a, if I go to a sports bar, I'm only there for the music and the dance. That's all I'm there for. I ain't there for the drinks. I like music and I love to dance. And if I have a little drink, I just have a little glass of wine. But music saved my life. So you have to decide, you know, how you going to save your life. And it all starts with when you change your attitude, you change your whole life. Well, so Mark, the interview with family. Change your attitude and you'll change your whole life. Well, Mark is the interview of family. Listen, these are pearls of wisdom from a legendary, iconic woman of herself, of her standard, of, a, of, of her stature. And I, I will be, I will be wrong if I don't get this woman her flowers. Because see, a lot of people don't know the story. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there wouldn't be no Mark is the autism activist if it wasn't for Manisha and the Holiday Firm. Period. Like, like, period. Wouldn't it be no awards? There wouldn't it be no magazines? There wouldn't it be no, wouldn't it be nothing if it wasn't for Manisha and the Holiday Firm? You know what I mean? Her, her cousin, I mean, like, they seen something more in me than at that time than I was seeing in myself. There wouldn't be no award show. It wouldn't be nothing. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Because Manisha pushed me and literally she pushed me. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. When I didn't want to push myself, you know what I mean? But she always told me that I'm going to be great. She saw some, She saw a brand in me that I never even knew existed. That's right. So, you know, it, at the end of the day, I, I call her godmother for a reason. Because she birthed autism activist Marcus Boyd. That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So on every interview, you. on every stage. God birthed you, but he sent me, his angel to support you in your birthing. That's he who did. birthed you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I give her her roses, her flowers, her doves. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's been years and we're still going strong and we're still doing incredible work because she believed in something that I didn't see. So, you know, it's, and it's been up and downs. It's been hills. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, so, all of that is a part of the process, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what Listen, I will say is thank you. That the process was going to be easy. They didn't tell us. They, they didn't tell us everything that's going to be in between that getting there, right? I just really want to say thank you. And, you know, you, you helped change my life. Marcus, like, you know, I love you. You know, it's genuine. You know, it's 100. You know, is God having sent? I told you that since day one, you ain't giving up on yourself. And I am very happy and very proud um, that God answered my prayers in covering you. And just to see the amazing things that you're doing today is mind blowing to me. Right? I'm just like, wow. I'm just shocked. Like, wow, you did it. It makes me very proud. And I Well, before we leave out of here, I think me and my family want to give you something that is well-deserved. What? <laughs> what is it, Marcus? Oh, my God. <laughs> don't. Now, you know I don't like surprises, right? I'm telling you that a long time. <laughs> Well, people, listen, I do got a little, you know what I'm saying, like, a little announcement. Um, we shooting the jingle music video October 14th in Atlanta. We're coming, shoot the music video. So I would love to have Manisha Holiday and the whole Holiday Firm, you know what I'm saying, 
come out for the video shoot to be in the we music video be. stuff like that if, we will be if y'all can make it you know what i'm saying oh. definitely have your, your branding your, your material definitely have your brand with you you know what i'm saying right. because this is about building brands and highlighting brands so definitely have your stuff with you but i couldn't shoot a music video for a show if i didn't have the goat with me in the music video she's a goat wow. so wow. you know from my family to yours you know i want to give you something that you deserve thank you Thank you so much. <laughs> you deserve that. My hat goes off to you. So until the next time, people, until the next buffet line, until the next 12 inch sub sandwich. You already know what we do here on Marcus the Interview a Show. It was a pleasure to have the legendary, the iconic man, Nisha Holiday. If you're in Atlanta, if you're global, if you're worldwide, look, look up the Holiday Firm. Look up everything she's doing. Google her, period. She's a walking boss. She's a walking legend. She's iconic. So you already know, we're going to leave like we began. Hey, yo. What's up, babe? Yo, this is the one, bro. Oh, yeah? Thank you. What's good? I am telling you, man, that, that cat, Marcus Boyd, yeah. you know, the interviewer. Yeah, I know that cat. This is the one, bro. Ooh. Okay. Mr. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. You want the scoop, he gon' give it to you. No matter the hey. conversation, he's already prepared to go and get into it with you. If you want somebody hey. that's willing to listen with positive information for the vision, then all you gotta do is give him a call or catch him on his Instagram. That's all. And he gon' get with you like ASAP. They gon' tell you where to place that. And he gon' give you every single thing you need in order for him to, like, make that dream happen for you. You believe in it, do what you do. Competition is sick with the flu. So if I was you, I would just jump on the plane because he yo, coming through. Yo, it's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Some people call him a kind of super. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it because Marcus is about to give it to you. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer.